flushed away. The brainchild of DreamWorks and Ardman. However, it said child was deemed a failure due to the falling below projected box office numbers, which caused DreamWorks to file for a divorce because the child was so sh. Despite sales figures sucking as well as the Dyson V8 absolute vacuum, at the end of the day, Lushed Away is a Hollywood animated kids film. And as with any Hollywood animated kids film in its time, a video game adaptation is bound to be made to cash in on the franchise. And Lushed Away was no exception. The game was released on multiple systems, but we're just gonna focus on the console version here. In Flush the Way the Game, you're able to platform, fight, and explore this septic setting while loosely following the loose plot of the movie. The game was... Uh, well... Received? Ranging from mediocre at best to downright terrible, with claims saying it's generic, poorly designed, and unpolished. But are these critics right? Sure, it may be another licensed game spawning from an animated film, but is there more to it? Perhaps the game wasn't being played right, it wasn't being looked under the right light. Playing it normally won't do it justice, but maybe... We need to go fast. Wait, hold on. Okay, so before we dive into it, allow me to gloss over the basics of this game. Flushed Away is an action-adventure game running at 30 frames per second. Although there are two versions of this game, the PS2 has slower loading times, thus making it unviable for speedrunning. So, GameCube it is. There are two playable characters in this game. The posh Roddy of the St. James's. Mum is always right. I'm a sus- and the adventurous Rita, sea captain in Retropolis. I didn't see you test. Oh, you. I mean, the third playable character, Rita's boat, the jammy dodger. I guess. The game has a level-based structure. Progression is made by completing and moving on to the next level, or mission, as the game calls it. The run itself consists of 11 missions. Time starts upon pressing start game on a new save file. Then you play through... Kensington Apartment, The Jar of Flies. Enter the Lair, Race with the Rats, Part 1 and Part 2. Escape the Lair and follow that girl. A Good Deed, Arachne's Revenge. Running the Gauntlet, Castle Siege, French Frog Legs. And finally, The Amphibian Dawn. With time ending once the screen goes black to play the final cutscene. Explaining each level in this hour-long run would be... a lot. So, they'll get their own videos detailing roots, strategies, and specific quirks. In the meantime, let's discuss the character's repertoire and what they can do with their toolkit. Oh yeah... you. <sighs> Listen pal, you're too, uh... special. So, I'll give you your own video another time, okay? Okay. Alright. Roddy and Rita both don 5 HP. If their HP ever reaches zero, they will die and you will respawn at the last checkpoint, which are scattered around each level. The rodents can recover 2 HP by picking up these red gems. They can lose HP from getting attacked from enemies or suffering from fall damage. Fall damage is extremely punishing in this game. The difference between surviving and suffering lethal damage is extremely marginal. There are also various kill plans scattered around the level, like water, or invisible ones that will kill you instantly. From a casual standpoint, dying is not punishing at all since you have an infinite amount of lives, but as a speedrunner, dying costs you precious time. Checkpoints have a varying level of abundance, so some deaths are not as punishing as others, and vice versa. As for what they can do, Roddy and Rita's basic moveset consists of moving with the control stick, jumping and double jumping with the A button, attacking with the B and or Y button, interacting with the X button, rolling with the triggers, and character dependent special moves. Interacting and rolling don't have anything worth going over at the moment, so we won't go into detail with them. Roddy and Rita can jump so long as they're considered grounded. 
At any point during the character's jump, the A button can be pressed again for a double jump. If pressed early, the double jump will be buffered and performed on frame 14, unless you're Rita, whose jump is one frame shorter. However, a buffered double jump slows the character's horizontal speed down for a little while. After this window, the double jump will be performed as the button is pressed without a major speed drop off. There's more to jumping, but let's go over the rest of their moves that's first. Combat in this game is merely a distraction with the basic goons. However, we will come across a handful of boss battles. Roddy is armed with his blade of choice, Toothpick, and fights Arachne and Lefrog. Rita equips herself with her trusty bungee cord and must take out the three hench rats, Fat Barry, Temple Nosed Ted, and Lady Killer. These bosses are only vulnerable for a short window of time, so they must be dispatched effectively using our hero's combat abilities. Roddy's combo tree consists of the primary attack 3-hit combo with the B button, the advanced attack 3-hit combo with the Y button, and a special spin combo, accomplished by throwing out primary attack 1, then rotating the control stick. Roddy can inflict the most amount of damage at once with the spin move combo, a whole 4 HP, but it has a ton of cooldown, so it's better suited as a final blow in a vulnerability window. Roddy's primary and advanced combos deal a total of 3 HP each. The primary combo has better range, but the advanced combo shines in its speed, making it the preferred combo to use. Rita has the same combo tree, except the advanced combo starts with the B button, since the Y button is used for something else for her. Unlike Roddy's spin move that deals 3 HP alone, Rita's spin move only deals 2 HP, and lacks a forward hitbox, for some reason. Despite that, it does not have the massive end lag like Roddy's, making this her most efficient way of dealing damage. But due to the lack of a forward hitbox, it makes it difficult to perform consistently. Her best alternative option is her primary attack combo, as it is superior to her advance combo in both range and speed. Each character has abilities unique to their weapon. Roddy can interact with these propeller points, which will launch him horizontally or vertically just by touching them. Roddy moves horizontally with the blue and purple points, and vertically with the orange and yellow points. The purple and yellow points send three times as far as their weaker counterparts. Rita's special ability uses her bungee cord to grapple onto these bungee points, which grant her much greater mobility than what she could do normally. The bungee icon will appear on the top right of the screen, which indicates whenever Rita sees something she can grapple onto with the Y button. Her field of vision is actually quite far, meaning she can target bungee points earlier than intended, allowing you to skip portions of the level. Additionally, there's a mechanic called instant grapple, which skips the 11 frame windup animation Rita does before she starts moving. So long as she has negative vertical velocity, or in layman's terms, is falling, Instant Grapple will activate whenever she grapples. She'll automatically do this when Chan and Grapple together, but you can either slide off an edge or preemptively jump to activate Instant Grapple yourself. Everything covered is all that Roddy and Rita were intended to be able to do. However, we... Uh... Flushers? We're calling ourselves Flushers? Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> had other plans. While Flush the Way lacks much movement tech, a lot of time save comes from optimizing jumps to get the maximum amount of distance in order to make it across certain sections faster or skip them entirely. This game employs a mechanic called Coyote Time. Coyote Time allows Roddy and Rita to remain grounded for a small window of time after running off a ledge. Combined with timing your double jumps to be as delayed as possible, you're able to make it across some gaps you were intended to leap across. Many of these jumps are super tight and can render you dead if failed, but the time save more than makes up for it. Other times, we need additional height to make certain skips, and grapple jumps make this possible. At least for Rita. Typically, your only options are to do nothing to slowly descend, hold Y to stop dropping, or press A to get off the grapple. However, if you hold the Y button and hold any direction, you can mash the A button to perform a mid-air jump. This is a grapple jump, which enables her to make much greater heights. Rita's double jump is quite limited, but it'll suffice to make certain skips. Even with coyote time and delayed double jumps, there are still some crevices too wide to be crossed by traditional means. Fortunately, we have a secret weapon. 
Primary Attack 1 I didn't mention the sheer game-breaking power of this move in the combat section because, well, the power of this move isn't actually the move itself. No, it's the end. If you press B in midair and then input a jump 32 frames after, you will perform a jump in midair. This is known as an attack jump. You do need to fall for at least a second, so a good amount of height is necessary. So long as height isn't an issue, you can pull these off anyway. Remember, attack jumps are frame perfect, so missing them could lead to your death. However, with the power of raw gaming, we can cheat death. One of the leading causes of death in this game is falling. Whether that be to coming to fall damage or falling into a pit, dying is slow. Which is lame. A strange quirk of Flushed Away is that cutscenes take priority over pretty much everything, death included. You can do funny things like walking on water as you talk to Sakusa or Charlie Wu, but there are more practical applications. You can fall onto cutscene triggers or activate them by yourself, such as by interacting with the boat, and you'll be fine. In regards to fall damage, it can be avoided with our secret weapon, Primary Attack 1. Oh, yes, since attack jumps reset your vertical velocity as you perform the midair jump, you can use them as a means to mitigate fall damage. However, there's another use of primary attack 1, the beginning, which enables you to reform a death cancel. By activating an attack the same frame you land, any and all fall damage you would have sustained will be nullified. So long as you can hit this frame perfect trick, it doesn't matter how long you fall, all damage will be nullified. As stated before, it's up to you whether to use an attack jump or death cancel to avoid fall damage. The basic enemies in this game are at worst a nuisance. They won't pose a threat. That said, there are exceptions. Projectile enemies. They will aim somewhere within your general vicinity, which means there's a chance they'll lock straight onto you, especially if you have to move towards them in order to make progress. One infuriating example is this slug here that can snipe you out of the air as you attempt to make this precarious jump. Getting hit will cancel your jump and put you in hit stun, sending you to your doom. However, this deadly demise can be avoided if you press the A button on frame 17 after getting hit from the front. This allows you to perform a hit stun jump. If you're hit from the back, you will have to press A on frame 21 instead. Since getting hit isn't ideal, hit stun jumps are mostly reserved as a means to save yourself. That said, hit stun jumps can allow for crazy stuff like this, but you won't see a human pull this off. That's all the tech and tricks we'll cover for now. There are plenty of level-specific tech and wild strategies to shave off time, which will be covered in separate videos in the Flushed Away Speedrunning Guide playlist on my channel. If you've made it to this point, I implore you to get involved in the Flushed Away Speedrunning community. As we continue to work on future videos, feel free to join the Discord if you have any questions or just want to hang out with us. Well, Flushers, until next time, Doodle Pip. <laughs>